Sveriges södra Wales i februari 1985. Den elva månader långa grusstrejken lider mot sitt slut. Varje torsdag går de strejkande till arbetarklubben för att hämta sin ranson utan de insamlade livsmedlen. Right at the beginning of this strike, when we asked our boys to come out, I did tell them then that the one who would win this strike would be the ones that could stick the most pain. And this how it's developing now. And it's a question, how much more pain can we stick? A ruling yesterday in the High Court limiting the number of miners pickets at five pits in South Wales to a maximum of six appears to have had little effect this morning. There were 40 pickets at Camhydri Colliery, and 132 men went into work, 25 at Coombe, 19 at Abbott and Airy, 10 at Milford Vale, and three pickets at Abernathy. Local union officials said they would continue picketing as normal. Well, I've never been a political woman, but over this last few months, I got political. I thought we were then. And I also got afraid to do. Has anyone part of the The last strike that uh, my husband was involved in was the 1972-74. Now, I wasn't involved whatsoever in that strike. But this one, I don't know. There's something. Every wave of the maiders have gone involved in this strike. Mm. Well, you take this community. That's all they have is the pit. If th that pit down there, or that one up there closes, we've got nothing, nothing at all. I Åkdelgruvan är strejken total. I Sjulen står stilla. Ännu är det ingen arbetare som har gått tillbaka och blivit strejkbrytare. The background of strike started off in uh, 1984. Uh, when we put a wages application, uh, 1983 rather, when we put a wages application in November 83, and the reply to our wages application was a straightforward 5.2% offer of an increase with the proviso that we agreed to the closure of 20 calories, with the further 70 calories going over the next five or six years. Immediately that offer was made, we refused. Then the board came forward and slapped a closure position on Cottonwood up in Yorkshire. Immediately that happened, the Yorkshire Coalfield came out on strike, Kent came out, Scotland and South Wales under Rule 41. I'm not saying this because uh, I'm chairman of Oakdale Lodge, <coughs> but we are the only Lodge, this end of the coal field, that's out on strike. And suddenly when you go one or two, but at least they've broken through. I firmly believe that the board would like to see Oakdale crack if it's only to crack a South Wales coal field. Because whatever anyone may say, the fact that Oakdale came out on strike 11 months ago was the biggest factor in bringing the South Wales coal field out. Utanför Åkdelgruvan, klockan är fem. Det är måndag morgon. Strejkvakten har samlats. Under helgen har ryktet spridits att några män tänker gå tillbaka och bryta den totala enigheten. Det är kallt. En av de kallaste nätterna den här vintern. We don't know who they are. 
Well, the man just said they don't want to talk to us. Are they undisclosed they were, Dan? No. No, no. För att förmå gruvledningen att skicka hem strejkbrytarna så bestämmer sig fackklubben för att återkalla hissförarna. På så sätt kan ingen komma ner i gruvan för att sköta vattenpumparna. Well, first of all we've stopped the safety men going in. So the pit has got eight hours before it starts to flood. So we would imagine at, uh, for 24 hours the management says that they'll man pumps and uh, attend to the other safety things. Now, he did threaten that if we didn't, they would be going around the village appealing to men to come into work, you know, more men in, in effect and to break the strike. So we warned our men about this and the news will get down the village. We're keeping a picket line here, not, not uh, very many men, but uh, we'll cover it for the 24 hours and we'll see how the situation develops from there. All warned that a second place could be lost by tomorrow. The pit's production manager, Gordon Robinson, has said that unless help is provided immediately, the main ventilating roadways serving the complex will be flooded, thus placing 2,000 jobs in jeopardy. The board says it met lodge officials this morning, but they refused to help. The lodge has criticized the way the board tried to persuade miners back to work to deal with the threat of flooding at the mine. The NUM accepts that rising water levels underground are a threat to the pit, but says that the NCBs use disgraceful tactics by touring the Blackwood area and making the loudspeaker announcements, asking men to report for work. Kvinnorna i soppköket förbereder lunchen på samma sätt som de har gjort varje dag under hela strejken. Hit kommer alla de ungkarar och ensamstående som inte får något understöd från fackförening eller från samhälle. Genom strejken har den traditionella uppdelningen i hemmet förändrats. Kvinnorna deltar aktivt i strejken genom stödgrupper. Så Roy får ta med sig den minsta till Arbetarinstitutet när Kath är på möte. I varje litet grusamhälle finns dessa institut. De är gamla och slitna. Men de är mycket levande i folkets hus. Här samlas de strejkande för att få de senaste nyheterna. Några gör listor med namn på strejkbrytare. Andra kommer bara hit för att prata eller dricka en kopp te. på att Kath ska komma tillbaka från mötet så att hon kan ta hand om den lilla när Roy går strejkvakt. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
she got her things to do with the support group. But we come to the agreement that my picketing comes first. You don't say quack quack against Bow Wow. Are we trying to arrange it then as a happy medium so that she can do what she wants to do and I do what I want to do? And then whoever's not, whoever's doing something, the other one says, care for baby. And they just that taking it. I really honestly think that that taking it. Would I be able to give you a testimony? But they can still stop the film. She wants to be involved. She, she's involved a great deal. And uh, I wouldn't want it any other way. Because it could be that she could be uh, one of the writers against the strike. Then it would could be a far, could be splitting up and things like this, which have all happened. She's right behind me with this strike. <laughs> she does the most cooking, like, but I I do the ironing, cleaning. Um, don't do pens. it all. No, we, we share it. Don't be ashamed now. We don't do it all. <laughs> But uh, I usually cook the evening meal because I, they, or if I'm not, they wait till I come back to do that. And um, in the night, then we get the ironing board out and we share the ironing. Um, I usually do upstairs the bedrooms tonight. Yeah. And if there's any job city I want, and I say to him, oh, when I'm out, will you do so and so? I say, uh, will you clean the bath or put the cleaner over off of this thing or clean the windows if they, if they need doing? You do that tomorrow, you'll be windows tomorrow, well, I really need to win bad. Two coal faces could be lost at the Oakdale pit, the coal border warning, and the flooding is also threatening to spread to the linked pits at Cullinan North and Markham. The board has sent out loudspeaker vans to tour the Oakdale area of Gwent, appealing for miners to help save the pit from flooding. The NCB say two faces could be lost within 48 hours. <laughs> Fackklubbens ordförande Dan Caniff och sekreteraren Alan Baker har varit hos gruvans direktör och informerat om att de inte tänker sätta tillbaka hissförarna i arbete. Det är ett högt spel. Ingen sköter längre vattenpumparna och vattnet stiger för varje timme i gruvgångarna. Kvinnor från olika gruvdalar har samlats på Arbetarinstitutet för att diskutera insamlingsarbetet, men också för att framföra kritik till den helt igenom manliga styrelsen för matkommittén. Now he's causing rounds for us because they're tired. I asked over 100 men. Half of the lady beggars didn't even have the decency to answer it. They're not picketing, they're not doing sod all. One told me, I'm not going out in this, it's raining. We go out in it, and is there a bloody fight? You just help it. And I think something should be bloody done because no way am I collecting for them lady beggars. The tins don't grow in them, party bags. I think we've had a good discussion on this, and to answer some of the delegates now, first of all, a man will work picketing, but a 
man... No, all right, all right. But a man will go out picketing. But when it comes to food collections and standing on street corners with his, with his tin open, asking for money and food is another thing. Now, some men have got dignity and some men are shy in that nature that... I say, eight potential men to pay the women and was not involved as they are in this street, it wouldn't have lasted six months. Roy har hämtat barnen från skolan. Trots fyra ungar har man klarat sig förhållandevis bra. I alla fall om man jämför med de andra gruvarbetarfamiljerna. Släktingar och vänner har försökt att hjälpa till. Men det kommer ändå att ta åratal att reparera ekonomin efter strejken. Efter flera timmar har Kath fortfarande inte kommit hem. Roy bara blir orolig. Men till slut kommer hon. Kath och hennes väninna har försökt att följa efter en polistransport med strejkbrytare. De har försökt att ta reda på vilka strejkbrytarna är och var de bor. Before we got to the round of turn, he got in between two lorries so we couldn't see him. I told you that when we took the round of turn, I know. we turned right up. I know you did, but I couldn't remember why. I know all I can remember you saying was, you went twice around the roundabout. <laughs> you didn't know we... Twice around the roundabout. So we ended up in there by having a cup of tea. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Then a settlement is ready and oh, waiting. What do you want? And if they truly want a settlement, if they truly want a prosperous coal industry for the future, then it's there for the taking. I believe the miners know that, and I hope they will take it and return to work. It all depends on the telly. If it's all in our favour, you'll get a lot of food. If something ever happens, then you don't. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. You know, it's all cold, and I mean, last week Maggie was out of favour, wasn't she? So, so we did well with a food collector. daughter's class and they are just a friend. <coughs> now that, that must have been a bit awkward. When I first found out I was already fight because knowing that she was her best friend and um, 
she was crying. Alison was crying. That she knows how serious it is. But I don't think this other girl really knows how serious it is. That her father's gone back to her, and I don't think she realizes how serious it is. But I wouldn't stop Alison playing with her. But the, uh, I couldn't. I couldn't let Alison go up there and play, knowing I got to go up and pick her up. And I couldn't knock his door. I couldn't do that. And I couldn't have her to play hers, knowing either I got to take her home then, or, or the parents got to come here to pick her up. Since 1974, the police have been trained. The government have planned this since 1974 to take us on. And they thought now that we were that weak enough position, they'd isolated us, that they could move in. A mass picket in from the start have been out. If we put 2,000 pickets on a line, the police will put 2,500 police or people of the forces, one of the two. Because we believe, firmly believe, that it's not all police on the picket line, that it's troops. John Alderton, who was the chief inspector of police for the Devon and Cornwall area, he stated on TV that the police were trained from 1974 to combat mass picketing. He also said that the police are moving outside the law in what they're doing on the picket line. Today? No. Well, we don't want to talk. Yeah. 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 You have no right we to talk. Have, at we all. have right, and we've let him sort that one out somewhere else. Too. Men in blue and a lot of stop them three times, right? And then you can tell well, us we're well, a new well, thing. Well, well, no, no, no. The laws of picking it haven't changed. You have never, ever had a right to stop Always, of course. Even in the twenties, never yes, had a right to stop Yes, them. always, always. <laughs> you bring a copy of the act and show me. You bring me a copy of the act and say they can't. You can't. You were not. You bring, you bring me a copy to show me. Look, stop well, your boss down in black would have agreed with us. He agreed that yeah. they were willing to talk to you. He agreed with They're us. They're not. Right. Well, you've got to stop them, right? To give us the opportunity to no, know whether they want to talk to us or not. The manager has said we they don't want to talk to you. No Look, we're out on the highway now. But we still got to stress to our members, you may not be a dirty scab, but you still a scab to go back after 10 months now. And any woman who went for you in a country who left her husband after 10 months out on strike, she's worse than a scab. Because what if that boy had terminal cancer? She'd have been down the road and bloody gone months ago. Yeah. Boys, we still got to stick it out. Yeah. And I said, well, if we go back, we go back together. But what I did stress in relation <coughs> <laughs> that the breaking point of individuals is different. Whatever you were talking about, you were talking about individuals. When I say about people on breaking points and using the word scab, 
I'm not talking in terms of Tony Allman and the likes of him. Down in Canaidra, who was on the sick up until August, and then formed a back-to-work movement. And what I'm saying is this, that we're using the word scab, but we've got to get in this proper context. So I said men's breaking point are different. And when you think, and that's where I'm going to meet every week, that men have been out for 11 months, <coughs> are up to their neck in debt, I'm in a better situation than a lot. Like I said, I'm in a better situation than young couples who are trying to buy their house, furnish it. I've got a car or so forth. Lots of men, not only in Oakdale, but throughout the British coal field, are on breaking point. And you've got to recognize it. That's all. But in regard to continuing this strike, no one is stronger than you to me. Samtidigt som mötet pågår i lokalen ovanför träffas några pensionerade gruvarbetare. These mines and these valleys were almost door to door one day, in a sense of speaking. Now, the only rule we had. I had three sons, right? And you sure enough, one kept with my, art, my way of life. It was so damn bad. And I looked at him and I thought, well, yeah, no. Well, number one now that we have learned is this. I was asked the same question about what did we learn from the 26th strike. What I said, it was possible to be improved for people to stop out six months on strike and still keep body and soul together. But this strike have proved that you can be out 11 months and do the same thing. But the main thing it have proved to us as uh, miners that if the whole of the trade union movement in Britain stood together or if all the working class in Britain stood together, no government could beat them. We could dictate and say what policies we want. And you know, what, really what we wanted was support, physical support, of all other unions in the country. But all we've had is lip service, just talk. From central fackligt håll har stödet i stort sett uteblivit. Men på det lokala planet fungerar i alla fall solidariteten. I bostadsområden och på arbetsplatser över hela England har insamlingsarbetet pågått under hela strejken. Även från utlandet har stödet varit starkt. Vi har en god support i er organisation. Väldigt bra, ja. För de minnen? Väldigt bra, ja. Hur många gör de dem? Nästan alla, tror jag. Ja, vi har alla varit med i samma kommunitet. Så de säger att de är fighting över, tror jag. Okej. Jag tror att det har varit kläckt in sedan strejken startade. Every week, <laughs> and you collect on a voluntary basis. Oh, that's completely voluntary. Oh, yeah. You're not a levy. That's what I mean. No, it's completely know. voluntary. Yes. Some give, some don't. Majority do give. Yes. And they give well in and most I remember, cases. And I remember totally. And the last time I made a total, it was uh, well over a thousand pound, yeah. and that was oh, back about ten, twelve weeks ago. Well, so when we had a dispute three or four years ago in the same way, the miners supported us. We support the miners yeah. when they're in trouble. Yeah. Solidarity yeah. together, and that's the yeah. way the working class will win. That's right. Yeah. What we needed to have done was to have campaigned along the lines you said, you know, with leaflets uh, in the miner. We should have argued what the government strategy was for the mining industry, because the British people would have seen this very clearly in relation to their own experiences, because railwaymen have seen their industries go down, steel workers, the docks. There was the potential for all these people to come around the miners and support us in our aim of changing government policy. And it's along that road we should have gone rather than mass picketing. People are becoming much more aware of other problems in the world, all sorts of problems. And uh, I, I hope that you might take note of that um, on our own individual.
individually we can't we can't do anything. But together we could. But you must do you must know start to organize. From year on end, join your political parties, join the socialist party, ensure that you can progress your point of view on human adversaries within South Wales that you can argue as you are doing now. You are platform speakers. You're involved in collecting, you're involved with groups of people, your families, you must know organize. The only way to beat this vicious government, this neo-fascist government, is to organize ourselves into political groups to beat this woman. Margaret Thatcher is going to get out, and she's not going to get in for a decade or so. We've entered a situation now where the government are dictating political terms to working people, their anti-trade union laws, their, their attacks on other democratic uh, activities of the people, and the trade unions had better learn the lesson from the miners that it's no longer going to be enough just to do picketing or to stop the production of their goods and commodities. They've got to now think how to, as Dan has said in a sense, how to involve other workers um, in some kind of protest, demonstration and activity against the government. Introduced into that a power which effectively destroys the whole agreement reached between the Cold War and makers, and therefore seek a solution of the problem that was started by the announcement of the Pit Closure Plan on the 6th of March 1984. What I fear, oh, no, is no, no, no. it doesn't seem to realize the importance of public opinion, I believe. They are done to get to this bottom initiative to make They will be willing while well, getting this letter withdrawn, which would be very important. You know. Explain to the ordinary viewer why there can't be an item on the agenda which says an economic pits. And the Cold War start talking about that. And you tell them, under that item, exactly what you just told me. Exactly. You see, to get the negotiations started, Exactly. Wouldn't it? Which, after all, is the name of the game. It's a horrible business to have people suffering like this. Wouldn't it, in fact, be reasonable to say, all right, you can put an item on the agenda that says uneconomic bits. Fat lot of good it will do you, because when you bring it up, I shall tell you what I told Brian Wolf. But at least you have met the precondition, haven't you? But you see, Mr. Wallman, you're missing the point with respect to this. I must say you would talk about anything, man. I would not be prepared to sign an agreement to close pits uh, on any grounds in advance of a discussion about the future of that pit or that union. To do so would be to give away the rights of a trade union. It would, in effect, be a no-strike agreement. All right. No, the, I don't think that Arthur seems to realize this. You know, he, the way he's talking there, you know, he, he didn't seem to have any kind of conception of the circumstances and conditions in which we've now arrived at and what's got to be done to get out of it, you know. And as I say, he doesn't seem to have this this um, idea that public opinion matters, you know, and how important it is, you know, because the government certainly understands the pressure yeah. of public opinion. Yeah. Sings om kväll på arbetarklubben. De flesta här är gruvarbetare. Vem som helst kan gå upp på scen och sjunga.
of massive flooding and the loss of three pits and 2,000 jobs in Gwent appears to have lifted. The miners at Oakdale today reluctantly agreed to provide winding men daily to take coal board engineers down to the pit to tackle the millions of gallons of water which threatened it. You have actually put the, uh, the winding, your own men, back on to save this pit? Yes, and it showed that we are more responsible than management, higher management. Knowing that when we come out on strike, it was against the closures and we couldn't let the pit go. So we put the winders back on the two winders on the afternoon shift and night shift. We didn't intend to lose the pit, whether we right or whether we wrong. But, um, and we wasn't only involved in Oakdale, we were involved in Markham and the Glennon North. Anyone move? move. All agree? Yeah. Right, down to the pit, boys. Två veckor senare återgick man till arbetet. Då hade man varit ute i sträck i ett helt års tid. Nu snurrar hisshjulen igen, men fortfarande vilar nedläggningshotet över många gruvor.